God allowed me to get CRPS so that I may have the compassion it takes to help others in the same or similar situation as I am in. My parents told me that ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to rescue every stray dog I ever saw. I think God put it in my heart to love go dogs because he knew one day I would have Avi, my service dog, and have the opportunity to help train him. This opportunity has made me realize that I would love to become a professional, a professional service dog trainer and help others gain more independence. I would also like to help educate people about service dogs and how they're not just able of legally being a dog. Sorry, let me start over. I would also like to educate people about service dogs, how they're not just pet, pets, but how they, how they are able to legally work and perform tasks to help their owners navigate a hard and difficult world. The relationship between dogs and humans is truly amazing. It's amazing how we communicate in verbal and nonverbal ways and how our dogs communicate with us similarly. Dogs have been around for thousands of years and it's incredible how intelligent they are. The way they notice things, both, both visibly and through sounds. Have you noticed that your dog can read what you're doing and react to it? For example, when you put on your running shoes and grab their leash, they get excited because they know you're about to take them on a walk. Or when you put your work clothes on or put your backpack on, they get all sad and depressed because they know you're about to leave. Or when you're having a really bad day, your dog will come up to you, lay next to you and lay their head on your lap, appearing to be sympathetic to how you're feeling. Dogs are amazing animals created by God and getting to know Avi both as a pet and as a service dog has made me appreciate these amazing creatures God created. We are fallen sinful people and not, aren't always able to express unconditional love in every circumstance like a dog usually does. It fascinates me and makes me wonder if God sent us pets to teach, about, te to teach us about humility and how to be better people. The Bible doesn't talk specifically about owning pets. However, in the passage Psalm 147.9, he provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call, shows that God is clearly concerned with his creation. God then says in Genesis 1.27-28 that he created us in his image, and we are supposed to care for nature and the animals he created. The exact scripture is, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Proverbs 12.10 adds to this by saying, the righteous care for the needs of the animals. This shows that God intends for us to have pets and that we are supposed to provide for them and care for their needs. Pets provide companionship, love, they teach us responsibility and so much more positive things. Avi has taught me seven very specific things which I would like to share with you today. These are also a great example of how people should treat other people. Number one, unconditional love. He gives me endless amounts of kisses and cuddles, no matter how I'm feeling. Number two, patience. When he rips up my favorite pillow into a million pieces and I have to pick it all up. When I teach him a new trick and I have to be patient till he learns it. Chasing around the neighborhood when he gets out, but how could you get mad at that sweet face? His constant whining when he can't reach a toy or wants to go outside for absolutely no good reason. Number three, responsibility. When I'm dead asleep and he has to go outside, making sure he has plenty of food to eat and plenty of water to drink, and planning trips to school, vacation, airplane trips, and knowing where pet relief areas are located. Number four, happiness and joy. The joy he has running free in the backyard. I wish I could run like that, but it's like he's saying this is the best day of my life. Or when I leave home for a while, when I come back, the excitement and joy is unbelievable. The way he not only wags his tail, but his entire body. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if we acted this way when we saw a loved one? Number five, being selfless. Avi comes before me, not because it is forced, but because I've fallen in love with this beautiful boy. I take him outside when it's cold. I take him outside when I'm exhausted. I've learned to put Avi before myself. Number six, non-judgmental. Avi doesn't care what color your skin is, what you look like, how smart you are, how much money you make. He loves you for who you are. I love how dogs can sense our love for them and reciprocate it. Wouldn't it be nice if we didn't judge, judge people based on their physical appearance, but based on how we treat each other? Last but not least, number seven, loyalty and trust. 
Loyalty and trust are terms used to describe a relationship between people who stay true to each other through good and bad times. Avi is loyal to me. When I don't feel good, he can sense it and he'll come over and lay next to me. He's there for me no matter what. Now that I've explained what a dog like Avi has taught me in his first year of life, I'd like to share how I found Avi and why he's the perfect dog for me. First, I hired a professional service dog trainer named Ian Hugan. Ian explained the characteristics I needed to find in a dog in order to train that dog to become my service dog. Ian also told me that there are four specific things that a dog must have in order to qualify for training. Number one, the owner must be officially diagnosed by a doctor with a disability, either visible or invisible. For example, CRPS, blindness, diabetes, seizures, MS, and so much more. Number two, the dog must grow to the appropriate size for the task needed. For me in particular, I needed a bigger dog to help me brace. Bracing is when the dog stands horizontally in front of you and you place both hands, one above the shoulder blades, one above the hips, and you push down until you're in a standing position. I also needed Avi to help me get up and down stairs and steps using a handle brace, which is a handle placed above their shoulder blades in which you put pressure on in order to stabilize yourself. Other people might need a bigger dog to perform deep pressure therapy, DPT for short. This is, the, what, this is when the dog lays on you and the touch and weight of the dog helps the person who is being stressed or overloaded. Number three. The dog must be in good health and verified by a vet. This means that the dog shouldn't be blind and shouldn't have any health conditions like a bad hip. Number four, the dog must have excellent temperament. You want a dog that is calm and attentive. You don't want a dog that's overly excited or aloof. The best way to test this when you pick up your puppy or are visiting your puppy for the first time is to flip the puppy on the back, on its back, and hold it like a baby. You don't want the puppy to be fidgeting, trying to get away from you or out of the position. The best response would be for the puppy to lay calmly in your arms, like this. This is a picture of Avi the moment I picked him up. During this, I realized that my perception and the public's perception of service dog is not very well understood. There's still much controversy around the legitimacy of having a service dog and what a service dog actually does. Many people confuse a service dog with an emotional, emotional support animal, a therapy dog, or vice versa. So to clear things up, a service dog is a dog that has been trained to perform tasks for an individual with a disability. They are task-oriented and are protected by the Americans with Disability Act, or ADA for short. Therapy dogs, while like service dogs go through training and can go into public places, there are restrictions. For example, they can visit schools, courts, and nursing homes, but they have to behave at all times. They do not perform any specific tasks and are for emotional comfort only. Emotional support dogs or animals, like I said before, ESA for shorts, they help their handlers by relieving stress and anxiety. They help their owners feel better. They are not trained for anything specific and they do not have access rights, except for airplane rights. Even then, they have to be a specific size and have to be able to fit underneath the seat. Their owners also get aid in allowing their ESAs allowed in housing where pets are not allowed. They do not perform tasks and are for emotional comfort only. Service dogs are classified as medical equipment and using a fake is a federal offense punishable by fines or jail time. Once I learned these differences, I obviously chose a service dog. And once a service dog is officially trained, the owner is allowed to take their dog anywhere. The law, however, was revised on September 15, 2010 by the ADA, clarifying and refining issues pertaining to service animals. The revision states that only dogs and miniature horses are recognized as service animals. Like I said before, these animals are recognized as medical equipment. A person with a service dog has access rights, and access rights allow the owner to enter any public space with their service dog because it is covered under the ADA. Having public access rights made it really easy for Avi to come and visit me in the hospital. This year, I've been admitted to the hospital two times, both visits lasting around 10 days. The first visit was in January due to terrible stomach pain in which I was unable to eat or drink anything. The second visit was in March in which I had to go in for a series of antibiotics to deal with a pick line infection in my arm. 
I was so thankful for my parents. The, my mom was the best the way she spent several nights with me in the hospital. My dad was awesome as he brought Avi to visit me every morning. It's amazing how Avi knew exactly where my room was and would practically drag my dad there. Avi was always super excited when he came in. He would joyfully grab a toy and play with me and jump on the bed and give me tons of kisses. Then he would jump off and say hi to whoever else was in the room. Avi loved coming to see me, but he did not like being separated from me. My parents told me that, that when I was getting a procedure done, that Avi became so distressed that he tried to sneak through the hospital's OR doors to try and find me. Luckily, he didn't make it through because the doors closed and my dad caught him. I do know, however, that in the recovery room, Avi jumped up onto the gurney with me and wouldn't budge. So when it was time to go back to the room, he took a ride with me back, and everyone in the hallway said it was adorable. Another thing about Avi was he didn't want to leave. He always knew when it was time to leave and would jump into my bed. It took us several minutes for us to convince him to go, and when he did, I became very sad. Overall, I was so grateful that my dad understood that I needed to see Avi in my time in the hospital. And let me tell you, Avi could be doing absolutely nothing and he would still make me the happiest girl in the world. No matter what, whether I've had a bad night or my pain is higher than usual, the second Avi walks into the room, a smile will appear on my face. And when I'm nervous, like about to have a procedure, Avi knows how to calm me down. All that free time in the hospital gave me plenty of time to read The Power of Positive Dog Training by Pat Miller. This book was suggested to me by my good friend, Ian Hugan. At first, I didn't expect to learn anything from this book, but I soon realized I was wrong. The book gave me a different outlook on training that I didn't expect. It emphasized how yelling negative things like no can be damaging while training your dog. The reason it can be damaging is your dog doesn't always know what you're yelling at them about. You're not always teaching them not to do that bad thing. You're teaching them not to do that bad thing in front of you. Let's say you have a puppy that's been peeing in the house and that puppy pees in front of you. You start yelling, no, bad dog, don't do that. The puppy doesn't know what he did wrong. All he knows is you are acting uncontrollable and scary. You're not teaching your dog not to pee in the house. You're teaching that dog not to pee in front of you. The author suggests that the best way to teach your dog to go potty outside is to praise them when they go outside by saying good boy or good girl. The author also suggests to replace the word no with the phrases oops or too bad, depending on what your dog is doing. Pat Miller also expressed that being able to read and understand your dog is very important. She showed me how to detect obvious stress and threat signals, as well as how to notice when he is demonstrating active or passive submission. I've noticed that when we're out and about and there are little kids around, Avi will watch them very carefully, and if they get a little bit too close, he cowers a little bit. This has given me the chance to back him off a bit and work with him in a more controlled environment. You never stop dog training. You can always teach your dog something new. Service dogs provide vital assistance for people with disabilities. From experience, Avi has given me a chance to get my independence back. Before, I was unable to walk without my crutches due to fear of my legs giving out or my pain spiking up. He's allowed me to leave my crutches at home and walk around without fear because I know he will always be by my side to catch me or support me. Overall, it's the owner's responsibility to ensure that the dog is trained and behaves properly and appropriately in public. It takes a lot of training, but it pays off to have a forever best friend watching out for you. So I encourage you, the next time you see a service dog with their owner, don't run up and distract the dog. Be polite and keep your distance. Please don't be offended if you ask to pet the service dog and the owner says no or not right now. That dog has a very important job to do and must not be distracted. Please know that everyone can make a difference in helping and respecting the lives of those with disabilities by becoming more educated about service dogs. Thank you.